How's it going everybody? Got a really exciting video for you today. Um, as you can tell, I'm in our apiary. You might notice there are two new hives out here. This coming weekend I will be adding two three pound packages of Carniolan bees to each of these hives. These are going to be the Green Acre specific hives, our personal hives. Uh, these are the hives that we've had out here for the past couple years. These are my, my friend Scott's hives. He's been my mentor. He's kind of shown me the ropes so I can uh, feel a little bit more comfortable doing it myself this year. I don't really have any tables out here to set up uh, my display. I thought what better place to share this video on leafcutter bees than in my apiary with our European bees. I've teamed up with Tom Hankey, the president of Midas Bees out of South Dakota to introduce hundreds of leafcutter bees to our property. He received his master's degree in agricultural economics from the University of Wisconsin, River Falls. When I first reached out to him, he said he's always happy to help out a fellow cheesehead. Unlike non-native bees, such as these European honeybees that were introduced from Europe in the 1600s to North America, specifically for honey production, these leafcutter bees are native to North America. It seems like honeybees get all the attention when it comes to dwindling pollinator numbers due to pesticides, herbicides, uh, climate change, it is raining on me right now. But there are over 4,000 different varieties of pollinating, pollinating bees in the United States alone that are all equally suffering. 70 out of the top 100 human food producing crops, which supply about 90% of the world's nutrition, need to be pollinated by bees in order to produce a crop. Without these vital insects, we don't exist anymore. Leafcutter bees are actually more efficient at pollinating than European non-native honeybees. That's one of the reasons I'm welcoming their presence here on the Green Acre. A couple hundred of these solitary bees can pollinate as many flowers as tens of thousands of honeybees. The better our rates of pollination, the more bountiful of a harvest we will have at the end of the growing season. Unlike honeybees which live in colonies, leafcutter bees are solitary. The female bees will collect pollen and nectar which they will take to the back of a nesting chamber lay an egg and then seal it off with leaves. They cut little sections of leaves, thus why they're called leafcutter bees, and they'll form a cocoon of leaves around that pollen, nectar, and the egg they lay. And then as that, depending on how long the chamber is, they'll continue that process until that chamber is filled. A single female solitary bee can lay between 30 and 50 eggs. After sealing the hole on the outside of the nesting chamber, that next generation of eggs will overwinter inside their cocoons until the temperatures are appropriate the following sp spring, at which point they will emerge from their cocoons. Something I found really fascinating is that uh, the back of the nesting chamber, for instance, these are tubes that uh, Tom sent me. These are just empty cardboard tubes. So the bee will come into the tube and uh, make a cocoon, fill it with an egg, and then they'll just keep, that, keep doing that process until the tube is filled up. So the first eggs that the female bees will lay are female eggs. And then at the very end of the tube, the first ones that are gonna come out, they lay male eggs. The reason being is that the male, the male eggs will hatch first out of their cocoons. And then when the females come out, the males are already there and ready to impregnate them to start the next generation of bees. I picked up this native bee barn off of Amazon, which I will provide a link in the description for. The nice thing about this bee barn is that this center column here with these uh, blocks can be removed so we can fit this foam block that Tom sent over. It's just a foam block that has a bunch of holes drilled into it and leafcutter bees have already filled up the holes with their cocoons. So this block will keep open and we'll, we'll put it inside the bee barn right here and allow them to hatch and come out of this uh, foam block. There's two to 300 uh, bees inside this foam block. Tom also sent uh, these empty cardboard tubes, which I already showed as well as pre-filled tubes. These all have uh, another couple hundred um, bees inside it, couple hundred cocoons, as well as a pheromone blanket. And then this box contains, I believe about 300 free cell cocoons. This pheromone blanket is going to help our bees that hatch find their way back to this bee barn so they can lay the next generation of eggs. I'm going to take this uh, blanket and place it behind the foam block. As 
as well as some of these tubes that I will put inside the holes on this bee barn. The top of this bee barn also contains a butterfly house. It's just an empty chamber inside there with slits on the front that allow butterflies to enter and keep other predators out. I'm actually going to open the gate on the back side of this butterfly house and empty all of my free cell cocoons inside there to uh, provide them shelter until they hatch. After all of our bees have hatched, I'll remove the pre-filled tubes and replace them with empty tubes so the cocoons of the next generation of bees can be built inside of these tubes. I already have a 4x4 post in place by our orchard, which I had a native bee barn on last season. It's positioned to receive the maximum amount of sunlight possible for its particular location. Tom was kind enough to offer our viewers a discount code, TGA and all lowercase for the Green Acre, for 10% off your entire purchase from Midas Bees. Tom also donates 5% of all of his sales to the Pollinator Partnership. I'll have the link to Midas Bees and the information for our discount code in the description of the video below. Thank you so much for all you do, Tom. I look forward to uh, working with you for years to come. I hope I've inspired my viewers to raise some of their own native bees as well. If you're not interested in beekeeping, at least reconsider the usage of pesticides and herbicides on your property. Help make monoculture lawns a thing of the past and native, biodiverse, edible landscapes the new norm. Remember, a dandelion is not a weed. It's a vital food source and a natural ecosystem. Take care everybody, I'll catch you on the next video.